Hey everyone, this is Adam Bergman, founder and CEO of Iry Financial. Welcome to another episode of Ad Bits, where I will be sharing bits of knowledge about self-directed retirement. If you want to learn more, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Just search IRA Financial. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ad Bits. I'm Adam Bergman, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. Got a great episode for you today because we're going to be talking about what are the solo 401k plan rules. This is actually quite a broad discussion. You would think that rules, when you're thinking about anything based off the tax code, would be pretty direct and pretty specific. But it's actually not really the case with solo 401k. Why? Because there's a lot of variability when it comes to what the actual solo 401k plan will allow you to do. So before I get into all these great options you have, let me just back up a little bit and explain you in context what I mean in terms of rules. So think of, and I've used this analogy before when mentioning 401k plans and how some are different than others, but really what you can and cannot do in your plan always just comes down to what is in the plan. It's kind of like the Bible, right? Written by God. Got to believe it. All the rules are in there. The Ten Commandments. Got to abide by those Ten Commandments. Okay. Now we do know that there's the Old Testament, there's the New Testament, and there's all these different analogies, expressions, and versions of rules from the Bible. So same thing with the solo 401k. The plan controls. Okay. You have a 401k plan, 40, 50, 60 pages. It controls what you can and cannot do. Now, not all plans are the same. Why? Because, yeah, they're based off a set of rules in in various sections in 401, 402, 404, 415 that talks about employee contributions, employer contributions, loans, withdrawals, hardships, um, in-plan service rules. There's a bunch of rules that are part of the plan that make up the plan document, but not all plans have the same rules. So generally, the difference between 401k plans today and 30 years ago is that you don't need to pay a lawyer to draft it for you. There's all these companies like IRA Financial that have pre-approved plan docs that are pre-approved by the IRS that you can use. So you don't need to spend $20,000, $30,000 and hire an ERISA lawyer like you used to 20, 30 years ago to get your own 401k plan for your employees and then have to spend all this money updating it, there are companies like IRA Financial that will do all that for you and keep your plan up to date. Now, when you take a plan from IRA Financial versus a plan from Bank of America or Vanguard or Wells Fargo, what's the difference, right? It's all 401k. The difference is the plan document may have all the same bells and whistles. It may include all the same options like pre-tax or Roth, employee deferral options. It may include after-tax contribution options to be able to do a mega backdoor. It may include a loan feature. It may include hardships. It may include in-plan service. But depending on where you get your plan, what is available to you vis-a-vis an adoption agreement and plan summary, what options are actually you're able to use and employ are based off your document. So Even though the document may have all the options I just mentioned, if you get a free plan from Vanguard or Schwab, they may not let you use it because their adoption agreement and plan summary description doc restricts what you can do. Now, of course, it's their right to do that. It's their documents. You are the administrator of the Formal K and the trustee, but they are the plan document sponsor, so they control the document. Okay, so that's why I say the plan controls like the Bible, But there's the Old Testament, the New Testament, the oral uh, Bible, uh, and then different uh, interpretations of it uh, that determine kind of what you can and cannot do if you believe in the Bible or if you're going to follow the tax code. So it's a very similar analogy because the plan controls, but there's different versions of a plan. And on one extreme, it's the very basic, simple document. You get a Schwab or any free document you'll get at a major institution or bank. We'll basically just limit you to make 
pre-tax employee deferrals, profit sharing, uh, and that's it. It's not going to give you a loan feature. It's going to make it awfully hard to get a hardship. Generally not going to give you Roth or after-tax contributions where you can do a mega backdoor Roth dollar for dollar. Uh, why? Because it's too much admin and they're not equipped to handle it. They're just giving you the free plan doc so you can buy their investments. That's the only reason they're giving you a free plan is buy my mutual funds, buy my ETFs and invest and keep your money with me. So they will offer you a free doc. We have a different opinion, different view, different business model. Same with all, uh, you know, the great companies in the self-directed retirement industry that provides these types of plan docs that will allow you to do stocks and also alternative assets and also give you all the bells and whistles. Our plan looks a lot like Schwab's and Vanguard's and E-Trade's. The difference is our adoption agreement, which determines what provisions in the plan are actually adopted and available for your business and your plan. That is the key difference between the basic free doc that has all the bells and whistles, but none of it is actually included, right? It's like going to buy a, uh, I don't know, a BMW, right? And you go to the dealer and the dealer says, okay, here's the base model. But if you really want like an engine, air conditioning, windows, souped up, leather seats, a sunroof, well, it's now this price and now you got to get this model. That's kind of the difference between getting a free plan at Vanguard or Schwab where you'll, you'll get like a base car with barely any air conditioning, leather seats, um, maybe even roll down windows, or going to a company like IRA Financial and all the other great self-directed uh, plan providers or other TPA plan providers where you are going to get actually the available options under the law like pre-tax and Roth employee deferral contributions, the ability to do after-tax contributions, which will allow you to do a mega backdoor Roth of 58 or 64,500 if you're over 50, the ability to borrow up to $50,000, the ability to take advantage of hardship and in, and in plan service withdrawal options, uh, all those great important things that make up the, be the huge advantage of having a solo 401k is not available generally in most contexts if you get a free plan. So the rules vary. The rules are coming from the tax code, but depending on what plan you have, that will determine what options and what rules will apply to your solo 401k. So before you get a free plan, ask what's in it. Okay, generally you get what you pay for. If you're just looking to max out and want to take advantage of pre-tax and want to buy stocks and don't care about a loan, then go ahead and get the free plan. It's a good deal, right? If you're like, hey, I'm just going to put in 5, 10 or 15 grand. I don't care about the Roth. I don't care about the loan. I'm not so worried about hardship or after tax or in plan service. I don't really care about that much admin support. I'm just going to put away money and buy ETFs or mutual funds. Then yeah, getting a free plan is a good deal. And I would suggest doing it. Okay. But if you want a little bit more sophistication, more options, more support, you want to do some Roth, maybe get a loan feature. Also maybe do alternative assets, maybe cryptos, maybe real estate, maybe hedge funds, private equity or want to have just a little bit more control and not stuck in one institution's um, investment ecosystem, then you know, getting a plan that gives you more options is, is a smart bet. It's not a lot of money. The admin's like super cheap. Um, in fact, if you have less than $250,000 in your plan, you don't have to file anything. Uh, no IRS filings, uh, nothing, super simple. If you have over 250K, you have to file a simple 5500 EZ form, which we actually do for you. Um, not a big deal, um, but that's really the only admin um, you're going to need to deal with. So it's a great plan. Uh, it's the best retirement plan for the self-employed. And once you figure out what plan you want, what, what options you want, um, what makes sense for you and, and your investment and retirement goals, then you get to take advantage of the amazing opportunities like making contributions up to 58 or 64,500 if you're over 50. And that's broken down into two components employee deferrals and profit sharing. Employee deferrals dollar for dollar, 19,500 if you're over 50, 26,000 if you're over 50. The profit sharing, 20% of your comp, if you're a sole proprietor, single member LLC, 25% if you're W-2. So for example, you make $40,000, you're under 50, self-employed, you can do 19,5 plus 20% of 40, giving you both 27,5 out of 40. So you can almost deduct everything you've earned, pay very little tax. Now you can also do that in Roth, the employee deferrals. Then 19.5 or 26 can be in Roth as well, which is really cool. So 
it is a really, really nice option. Okay, the profit sharing can be in pre-tax, but then you can convert it to Roth. Also, you have the ability to do after-tax contributions, take advantage of the very, very cool mega backdoor Roth 401k solution, where you can go $58,000 or $64,500 dollar for dollar, and then immediately convert it to a Roth IRA. Okay, bam, move it out of the plan without a trigger event into a Roth IRA, or keep it as a Roth 401k. Okay, so it is super, super, super good. Uh, you can also do a loan feature. Um, the loan feature allows you to borrow 50,000 or 50 percent of your account value, whatever's less. And it can be used for any purpose. Five year loan, uh, lowest interest rate you can use now as of May 2021 is prime as per the Wall Street Journal, 3.25 percent. So, uh, really, um, good opportunity to take care of bills, expenses, or just use for any purpose. There's no limitations on what you can use it for. You just got to pay back within um, five years. If you use it for a loan for a home, it's over 15 years. Um, so a really cool opportunity. And again, you can do multiple loans, don't have to do it, but it's an option if you want. Um, so that's also cool. Um, you can do traditional and alternative asset investments, right? You can do the stocks, mutual funds, you also can do anything you want other than collectibles like antiques, art, baseball cards, or self-dealing transactions, right? Anything that doesn't directly or indirectly benefit yourself personally or a disqualified person, which is essentially a lineal descendant, parent, child, spouse, daughter-in-law, son-in-law, or any entities you control. So other than that, you can do it. Private equity, hedge funds, venture capital, hard money loans, private business investments, um, cryptos, gold, Real estate, residential, commercial, domestic, foreign, tons of stuff you can do. Just can't be involved personally or any lineal descendants on the other side of your 401k. But you can gain diversification, gain the ability to invest in assets you know and trust, and also um, you know hedge against inflation through investing in hard assets. So there you go. That's essentially it. Um, when it comes to rules, uh, you would think the rules, every plan would be the same. Every plan would have all the same rules and they basically do the difference is the adoption agreement which is the actual document that tells you what you can and cannot do so it's, it's kind of like the bible is 500 pages and um this summary slash adoption agreement tells you what provisions apply to you right there's a lot of stuff in the bible that's not applicable right especially in the old testament it talks about like building there's lots of provisions in there and, and lots of um text about building the temple, right? Or doing animal sacrifices. Well, we know that doesn't really apply to us. We don't do animal sacrifices. There's no temple in Jerusalem. So that stuff is there, but it's not really you know, applicable to us. So think of the adoption agreement that kind of pulls all the applicable provisions, like what you, you should do, you know, the, don't uh, commit adultery, don't murder, all those important rules that's in the Bible that we follow and makes up what our uh, society looks like. The adoption agreement kind of summarizes all that as well as the plan summary and tells you what applies to you. So the difference is if you get a free doc through a traditional institution, your Bible is going to be pretty small. You know, you're not going to get a lot of info out of it and you're going to be limited on like what applies to you. If you get a more open architecture plan doc, which IRA Financial and other companies in the industry do, you're going to get every potential provision in the Bible uh, that's applicable will, will be there. And in the case of a 401k, they're not negative rules. They're more uh, positives in terms of what you can do, not what you can't do. So um, that's really the difference uh, in terms of the documents. The plan governs, the plan controls, but the adoption agreement basically is the key document and the plan summary description doc that tells you what provisions in that plan doc that you're never going to read because it's 50 pages and it's very complex because it's based off um, tax and ERISA lingo, um, it tells you what, what actually applies to you. So even though your plan may have the ability to do Roth or there's loan feature provisions in the basic plan, if your adoption agreement and plan summary don't include it in your, in your doc or in your actual plan, then it's basically not there, even though it's in the basic plan, the adoption agreement cuts it out. So I uh, just wanted to give people context because a lot of people don't realize there are differences in plans. I can't tell you how many people I talk to that come to me like, Adam, I, got a, I went to Fidelity, I got a plan, I want to do Roth contributions, I want to do a loan. They're treating it as a distribution, they won't let me do it. I don't understand. I checked out 
you know, the IRS website. I know I can do a loan. I don't understand what the deal is. And then kind of explain them this podcast in two minutes and say, well, not all plans are the same. You got a cheap one. You got a freebie. If you want a plan that actually includes all the bells and whistles, all the options, not just your base BMW, but actually with a steering wheel, air conditioning, leather seats, sunroof, then you need to move to this plan because the base is just going to take you from A to B. But if you need to do more like Roth or loan, uh, after tax, uh, alternative assets, different type of stuff, you're going to need to move to this more advanced model. So um, maybe the uh, BMW analogy is a little bit better than the Bible. Uh, I don't want to get into religion, but everyone understands, you know, cars, I guess, better than God. So um, just think of it that way. If you're just good with the base car going to A to B and just want your basic features, then the free plans are going to work for you. Those those rules will be enough. If you need more um, customization, uh, more open architecture, then look for a uh, more open architecture plan that will give you all the options available by law and let you really take advantage of the most robust and powerful retirement plan for the self-employed and small business owner with no employees. So thank you again for listening, for doing this on, on YouTube. Thank you for watching and uh, appreciate all the support. You guys are awesome. And uh, thanks again. Talk to everyone again and next week. Take care, be safe.